Dear Swissies, I am right now in Bella di Cino and I will show you the sunny side and the rainy side of Di Cino. Enjoy! We are currently in the Valle Bavona, which joins the Macho Valley at Pignasco. The river of the same name snakes for 12 kilometers over 560 meters in altitude. The valley is adorned with many such small stone villages, and some of them are over 600 years old. You may see the large stones lying around everywhere. They date back to the time when the glaciers retreated. There were many landslides and these stones are the witnesses of it. The most famous village in the Valle Bavona is probably Forolio. Here the water masses plunge more than 108 meters into the depth. In summer there is a lot of activity here, but today it was quiet. At the end of the Valle Bavona there is a cable car up to the Dam Robiei. From there you can make many nice hiking tours, but in winter the cable car is closed. The original plan was to hike through one of the many chestnut forests in Dicino, but unfortunately the weather did not play along. And so I strolled through the small many villages and let the sound of the rain affect me. For me such days have something totally meditative. I feel very connected with nature and love the pattering of the raindrops on my umbrella. I love the intensity of the colors when it rains. But not only the colors are fascinating, the scents also have a more intense effect. And so I smell the scent of the last ripe grapes. For Rasta it makes no difference whether we are on the road in sunny weather or rainy weather except that he has less problem with his eyes in weather like this. It rained and rained and rained. And also the ponies looked very chic with their wet fur. Hi. You have a wet hair look, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like me. Huh? Hi, Ferd. Huh? On days like these, you have the Valle Bavona all to yourself. And so I could walk through Forolio without seeing a single soul. By the way, in winter, these villages are not inhabited. There is also no electricity in the Valle Bavona, even if some people try to cheat their way through with car batteries or solar panels. But officially, there is no electricity here. I enter another valley called the La Vizarra Valley, which goes up to the little village Fusio. There is a very good restaurant, which was unfortunately closed. In October, many of the grottos are already closed too. Actually a pity, October is for me one of the most beautiful months of the year. We make a short stop in the vineyards of Brontallo and then drive back to our Rustico in Ronchini, where I made a fire in the Schmini oven and worked in the faint hope that the next day would perhaps bring some brightening. It rained all night long, and so the waterfalls were really impressive the next day. I covered my favorite spots again and drove once again to the La Vizarra Valley. There is a huge stone that juts into the road. This stone is called Sasso del Diavolo, the Devil's Stone. 
The legend says that the particular religiousness of the inhabitants here made the devil Barbariccio angry. He broke the big stone from the peaks and wanted to destroy the houses of the people with it. Exhausted and sweaty, the devil arrived in the valley and a lovely woman stood under a cherry tree and invited the devil to take a break and rest. The devil Barbariccia then did so, but afterwards could not take the stone on his shoulders again. Despite all his efforts, the devil had to give up and went cursing back to his hell. By the way, there is a similar stone in the canton of Uri, with a similar story. When I am in this area, the small village of Boschetto is always on my to-do list. Here you can find the typical Dicino village character and discover something at every corner. Today, however, I wanted to take a look at the village from above. Also, the Cascata del Boschetto leads a lot of water today. This village I already visited yesterday in the pouring rain, do you remember? Although I actually did not expect it, but even the sun showed up today. I was mentally already on the way home, as my content creator heart said, Go back, go back! I'm sure there will be beautiful pictures. And so I turned back again and drove especially for you again into the Valle Bavona with sunny weather. Now the question is, what did you like better? Huh? The rainy side of Ticino or the sunny side of Ticino? I think both have their charm and I always want to show people that not all is lost when the weather forecast is bad. After taking another look at the sunny side of the Valle Bavona, I headed back north. As long as the alpine passes are still open, I will of course drive over the passes instead of through the Gotthard tunnel. Especially the Bedretto Valley is a feast for the eyes in October. Here are quite a few larches that are currently in their golden time. I cannot get enough of these beauties and so I will travel next week for you to the Engadine to show you more golden large forests. A wonderful trip comes to an end again.